good morning guys welcome to today's video today is the saddle fit video i'm super excited i'm headed out so he's already in the barn getting the horse ready they should be here anytime update on my finger uh i already got it all dirty i don't know if you guys can see it but it is filthy of like i can't keep my hands from doing stuff i just am a busy person and i don't even think about it but anyways last night i was super sick super sick i just like got like flu-like symptoms i had a fever my eyeballs were all red i couldn't wake up i was just laying on the couch i had a really good sleep two doses of the antibiotic and i'm feeling so much better still have the red mark look at how cute posy's been sleeping with the ducks you guys all right we are ready are you ready to get your saddle fit i got everything uh, a little bit more straightened up. This barn is just meant to be dirty, but Sophie had like stations everywhere. She has like saddle pads laying everywhere. She is messy. You're messy. Well, I keep my helmet there so I don't. It's okay. You get it. You get it naturally by dad. But what's really exciting to me is that after I uncovered our agility set, I'm excited to do this now. So I'm going to do this this week with my puppy. Look how cute the ducks are. They sleep in the shade. Isn't that adorable? Shoot, I missed him. And my little tomboy, it was looking so cute. He just puffed himself up and I missed it. All right, so the saddle uh, fixing, <laughs> the saddle fitting issue just went from not fixed to not fixed still. We still have more work to do. We have, it's a whole process, you guys. Uh, so we had the fitter here uh, to adjust and figure out what we need to do to make Sophie's saddle fit lady. And it's a whole process, so we're not done it yet, but uh, we are in a process of getting it done. So I'm excited about that. But oh man, it is hot out and that was long. It was long, but I learned so much from the saddle fitter. So, so, so much. Like it's invaluable, invaluable information. Like I feel so much more knowledgeable just from talking to them, like shocking. When it's really hot like this, I don't like to bother the animals. The farm is quiet right now. But I wanted to tell you guys that, that Sam was coming home from the doctor just now and just on the side of our property. A baby black kitten, one. How big, like how old, two weeks? Eyes open? Yeah. No, eyes weren't open. Wow, um, like a newborn kitten. So I'm guessing this farm here where there are a bunch of black cats. It was right here. Some people were walking along and they heard right a meow. Here in the, right there? I don't think so, somewhere. So some people were walking by and they heard a little tiny kitten. Was it meowing or just squeaking? So anyway, they stopped and they found it and Sam stopped and he saw it and it was black. And I'm like, Sophie and her are like, why didn't you bring it home? I feel bad for the mama, but the people are going to rescue it and feed it and keep wild it. It's yeah, it's a wild cat. But you know what? If it's bottle fed and domesticated, it'll be a little less wild. But um, yeah, we definitely did not need it. But if you came across a kitten in the woods, wouldn't you keep it? Anyways, um, so the mama cat probably was moving her kittens and it lost one and that just makes me so sad because I'd want to find the mama and take it back to her because animals actually do suffer loss like they actually do mourn the loss of babies and she has more babies so maybe she won't notice but there will be moments where she did does notice that she lost one animals I've seen animals count their babies even so so sad this is it beaver tails I got score and cheesecake. What'd you get? Apple. Pie. Did you? I wanted to try it. Good. Maybe we apple should pie. split. Yeah. So, apple pie. Oh, that doesn't look that good. I can't put my camera back there because I have no hands. <laughs> Sophie got Oreo. Gabby, what'd you get? Brownie. 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 Gabby only eats chocolate. Mmm. I can't wait to try it. What are you looking for? So I'm gonna show you guys what happened at the Saddle Fit today. Uh, it was so super interesting. I learned a lot, it was amazing. So at first she had Sophie put the saddle on the horse and, and then she said really sternly like, is that where you always put it? And Sophie said, yes. And she said, good job, because that's exactly where it goes. She said, everybody puts it far forward and that is so true i used to do it sophie used to do it gabby used to do it i had to fight I with everybody put i put it up here and then i slide it back i know so i had to have somebody come and show us exactly where to put it so that we would stop doing that and it's like a big huge struggle but yeah that's really perfect sophie 
and that's what she said she said like that is perfect so anyways the trouble with the saddle and every saddle that we have and any saddle that we're gonna buy is that it should sit like this and basically so her muscles aren't built up right now underneath here she's not built up correctly she doesn't have the right muscles to hold a saddle in the right spot and the fact that it sits down like this is why it puts Sophie in a chair position so it should be like this so basically she said like to get a saddle right now for her is going to be impossible um there are saddles that you can get like extra flocking in the back and that will like help a little but that she's just not ready to fit a saddle to because she's not the right shape and that's kind of what we thought and that's how we've always done it we've always waited to make sure that the horse is the shape it's going to be before we get like a custom saddle so anyways she suggested some things to help us in the meantime which is obviously a half pad with shims so it's like we already knew what to do um she recommends a different half pad because this one has three shimmable sections on it which is so, supposed to be so good and she says that these shims that come with this pad are not good even though we were told they were amazing because they just they just squish down I don't know how to explain it they just it just flattens like there's no it doesn't hold its shape it just flattens out and anyway she wants us to get another half pad one that has two pockets and then she wants to, to us to layer the shim so at the front there will be two shims and we have to get a very specific shim so there will be two shims at the front and then on this whole back half we'll layer it so like there will be one shim and then the next shim will be like start so the one so it'll like say it starts here we'll put one shim here and then we'll layer it we'll put another shim and we might start the other one here and then we might start the next one here like we have to layer it so that the shims build up the back but don't build up the rest of it too far it sounds complicated but she made it sound incredible like the saddle fitter was amazing she says it's probably going to take her about three months with the proper with the saddle fitting exactly the right way uh for her to build up and then we can figure out what kind of saddle we're going to get so sylvia is definitely going to get another saddle um she's just not ready for it yet so we're going to use what we have and build it up and build it so that sophie's not in a chair position and so that it fits a uh, lady better and that's the plan and then after that she gave us like a bunch she gave us a bunch of ideas of like saddles that would be a good idea for her saddles that can be adjusted like if you send it away but i don't know if if like so a lot a lot of the saddles that she told us were kind of were like a mid quality a midline one which i i'm fine with that like ones that you buy at the tax store i am totally fine with that but if you already have to send it away to get it adjusted then it just makes sense for me to have somebody come and from like a higher end company and come and fit her and do all the work and take care of it and i don't have to worry about it at all that's what we've done in the past i've really liked it so definitely a new saddle in the works um we're gonna order the saddle pad tonight and get that and the shims and get that all set up and we're gonna work on getting it all set up um, and then, even better, she's going to come back in a couple of weeks and reassess the whole situation after we've shimmed the new half pad and got it exactly the way that we told, that she told us to. And if we didn't get it right, she'll help us, like, get it right. So, so he's going to have to get another saddle and we're going to have to get another <laughs> shim with horses. It's like nothing, you know, it doesn't matter what you already have, because I already have, like, I showed her, like, I have this and I have this and I have this and none of them would work, so... We're getting everything brand new for Ladybug, but not for a couple of months. She has to build up first, and so that's what we're going to work on. And, yeah, so that's it for the saddle dilemma. Look, she loves the fan. <laughs> Who wouldn't love the fan? So, uh, yeah, I showed her that we have this really nice um, Cavalier shock absorbing gel pad, and it's a rear riser, which is really cool because it will rise up the back of the saddle and she said that it doesn't work because this puts too much extra material in the front and it makes the saddle too tight on her shoulders she did really like that one now but the thing that i find like the hardest with horses is that there's no one way there's no right way and there's well there's a wrong way but there's no one right way there's like a million right ways like 
everybody has a different way and as long as it's working it works every trainer has a different way every owner has a different way like it's a different way for everyone so like you know we use one at saddle fitter and they're like here use this this and this brand and we're like okay and we go out and get it and then we get another saddle fitter and they're like oh ew use this brand and this brand and this brand and we're like okay so then we go and get that stuff and then it's like never easy horses are never easy i see you coming for me that little rooster man so that's what my finger looks like now i lost my band-aid it doesn't look that bad but you can see you can see the difference in them but it's much be much better now i'm nervous to go in my garden like I'm afraid to go and dig in my garden. I know I could just I know I could just use gloves, but I'm not good at like carrying gloves around with me. I just stop by my garden and I end up like hanging out in here. So my garden is going to weeds. But I wanted to show you something really quick that's weird and scary. Look at all my tomatoes. So do you see like these ones just sitting on the ground doing nothing? Just sitting on the ground? They don't have any like they don't have any worm bites or bug bites or anything. Like the bugs aren't eating anything in my garden. Like look at how good they are. See, look at, there's not a single bug bite on any of them. Look at my lettuce. It's been sitting out here for days and days and days. Look at it. There are no bugs eating my lettuce. Not a single bite on my lettuce. Do you see it? No bites. It's literally the same for everything in my garden. Like, it's so scary. It's so scary, you guys, because it means that all of our seeds are genetically modified to be resistant to bugs, which means that all of our seeds are poisoned. If bugs won't eat your food, then you shouldn't eat your food. Like, it is so scary to me. I'm almost done with the beans and the peas. I just have, I'm just waiting a little bit longer for these ones to like get a little bit more mature and then I'm gonna rip all this down. See, there's a bunch in here that are already big. Pickles in, or I've been bringing cucumbers in every single day, I have hundreds of them inside. Not hundreds, but I have a lot. Okay, so look at this. These peas right here, I'm just gonna rip them out, have been sitting on the ground where the bugs are and there's not a single bug bite on them. Look at this little cucumber. Not a single bite from a bug. How much is watermelon at the store right now? Right now it's on sale for $2.95, but at the store down the road, it's $11.99 a watermelon. And when they're on sale- ah! I'm being attacked, I'm carrying my peas. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I just turned around and everybody was here. Let's see if the chickens will eat it. Anyway, it's scary. Our food supply. Not one single piece of produ produce in my garden this year did a bug try and bite. Oh. Isn't that scary? Yeah. Now you know why I don't eat vegetables. Yeah, good excuse. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> my vegetables from my garden this year have been the best tasting that I've ever had before. Like, the chickens like it. We'll see. Tomorrow we'll come back and see if the chickens are eating them. Don't you know that you're